Good morning, folks. Couple plasma filaments, solar tornadoes dancing into view on the south. We've got a bit of weather, a bit more climate, and a big no-no for one of the National Lab Cosmology groups. Let's begin at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on our star was very quiet. The active region on the north is good and proper, but magnetically simple and not flaring. We say goodbye to low-latitude coronal holes, along with more plasma filaments over the north. One of the things that is creating this surge of filaments here just before the next sunspot cycle is the changing magnetism preparing for that cycle. Solar wind is very quiet. It wasn't exactly a stampede of plasma before and is now dropped out to even lower levels. Geomagnetic conditions enjoying their nice vacation from instability here. Quick word on Comet Atlas as it's finally sprouted a considerable tail as expected. Now folks, we've been through a lot of comets like this hyperbolic, eccentric, intruding into the inner system. Every time it's a huge news hype, especially in our community, and every time it's a letdown. This one does not have the orbital diagram date hits that made numerology conspiracists swoon like Elenin did in 2011. It's not coming anywhere close to the sun like Ison did in 2012, and Comet Siding Springs Coma engulfed Mars in 2014. It was a near hit. Now this one is not on any sort of track like the last three great comets that weren't, but these things are always a little exciting. This one will be watched as it gets into the inner system, but I expect little more than a green streak in the sky in a few weeks. Also, within about three weeks, it will be past the point where any breakup would toss impactors at Earth in even anyone's wildest imagination, and if anything, possibly watch for a solar instigation when it gets close, but then again, we're still very early on in the cycle for it to be much more than sparklers before dinner. Well folks, this is what Colorado Springs is waking up to. Makes me want to be somewhere warm, as long as there isn't a fast-moving storm system set to take on a fourth of that nation's coastline over the next 24 hours. Think I'll wait till it breezes by. There's a new paper in Nature, and it's spawning a lot of fun articles online, but I'm not sure whether to embrace it or try to think outside the box. On one hand, this was one of the periods of life explosion in the world, much, much hotter than it was today, but not that huge of a gradient and allowing for basically a habitable planet pole to pole. First, this makes you ask if this was a life explosion bounty of grace for the planet, why are we so worried about one degree of warming today when emissions globally have begun to flatten the bell curve already? The other thing is that I do not believe and neither did Albert Einstein, the Pentagon and OSS father of the CIA or dozens of others in the field over centuries, that Antarctica is always situated at the polar region. It does return to that position over time, like the North, to give that evidence of the poles in that position forever. If you are new to this concept, click the Cosmic Disaster playlist below. Gonna be a fun afternoon for you. Anyway, back to this climate thing. We've got yet another examination of the IPCC predictions, which finds them to be three times too extreme. On their low end, when they give you their scary numbers, forget about it. This preprint follows in the wake of dozens of papers since the new solar particle forcing data set has been released, and they cripple the climate story for those actually reading the papers and not listening to the talking heads on the idiot box. But in truth, whether it's the sun or your SUV, the climate of this planet is exiting a multi-century nursery state. We are going back to the time when our ancestors were so astounded at the earth that they blamed angry gods of wind and water and fire for what was happening. In today's world, that's going to mean a lot of conflict. And speaking of conflict, this is a big ouch for Stanford, SLAC, the same great house that delivered Taurus jet modeling with electric currents and magnetic fields. Just not the same team of people. New satellite galaxies have been found and they're hoping to find more and learn about the invisible dark matter halos around them. Well, stepping back a moment from the fact that dark matter isn't real, and many professors think there's proof of that in the plasma cosmology playlist below the video here. But since our primary examinations in the most certain trend of the field is finding no dark matter and no dark matter needed in those exact same satellite dwarf galaxies, it is the number one thing we're seeing published in the mainstream journals now. So when they write how they're interested in learning about the cosmos from their observations, I think to myself, just your observations? What about the rest of your field? Cosmologists, dark lies matter, and you're going to pay for them soon. 
We greatly appreciate your support. Folks, if you need to be caught up on climate, cosmology, or catastrophism, please check out the playlist listed in the description box below the video or go to suspiciousobservers.org and find all the videos on the homepage. We've got your wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.